Hi, welcome back to CVN305, our second lecture on how to evaluate structural safety. Now we are going to look at a specific example of how to do this. So let me make sure that everything is okay. So I'm going to look at an example. of structural safety evaluation. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to say, fine, uh, I'm going to look at a sample problem. Essentially speaking, I have a wall, a vertical wall. And what I want to do is, I want to hang a, a big search light off of this wall. So this is where I want to be. I want this distance to be about 3 meters. And I question is, how do I design a safe way to hang this? So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, okay, search light is a fairly big thing. It might crash and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a beam here from which this light hangs and I'm going to put a support. If you look at this and if you compare it with our, with our crane, remember this crane, it works exactly the same way. Here is the here is the support, here is the main beam and the weight is going to hang from there. So in a very fundamental way, hanging a search light off of this is very similar to hanging a big beam, okay, uh, like in a crane. So how are we going to do this? So this is our design. So this is our configuration and our question is, so let us label this A, B, C. And our question is, okay, we want to find out what should be safe dimensions. And materials. The problem with the problem with uh, any design is that most designs work with incomplete information so in many case we have to guess some data based on experience and reasonable ideas and verify whether that would work. So in our case, so we have a number of parameters that we don't know. For example, we do not know what is this angle how much we do. So if I know the angle, then I can calculate CB, so on and so forth. But there's always information that we don't know. Okay, there's nothing about it that we can do. So let us go through this process and we'll see whenever there is some missing information, we will guess, we will guess something. We will then check whether that will work or not. Okay, that's why I'm using Excel because there you can, it's very easy for you to guess and check. Okay, so step number one for our process is identify load. In this particular case, it is the chandelier or the search light and we are going to assume it is about 200 kilograms. How do I know? I know that really search lights, big search lights are extremely heavy. It is not just one light, there is multiple lights and by the time you hang it all up, it is probably about 200 kilograms. So this is a heavy light. Okay, So 200 kilograms which is uh, approximately 2000 newtons which is 2 kilonewtons, okay, that's reasonable. 
notice I rounded things up because I only know rough weights. So, there is no point in doing very precise calculations at this stage. So, we are done with this and it is a dead load. Meaning, it is not going to change the time, it is just going to hang as it is. Second, we are going to identify locations where we want to check for failure. In this particular case, we are going to say, hmm, maybe I am going to look at it is probably going to break like this and like that. Those are my locations. So, let us call it location A and B. Okay. So, you can say, you know, how would I know what locations? Well, when you are a, when you are a beginner, when you start out, you do not really know what locations. What happens is, as you go and you gain more experience, you will start having very good idea where the locations are you will get some intuition, okay, some feel, that is what it is called. So, then you will know, okay, okay, it is not going to be a problem. So, as a beginner, you will try more locations than are necessary. In our case, we are going to try this location to see if that is okay. In many cases, that will allow us to calculate some parameters. Usually, I want to say, okay, you know, what determines this parameter? It is whether it is going to fail there or not, okay. So, I want to calculate there. So, what I am going to do is, I am now, now we are at step number 3. By the way, you know, this is one of those things that should not, that probably concerns you a little bit because I am saying everything is, it depends. You know, how come there is no answer? You know, how come you are not telling me what to do? The answer is, there is no single way to do all of this. We are beyond the state where you, the only thing you have is answer at the back of the book. Imagine you are a contractor or something like that and you are building a building and then you decide to build a wall and then you are saying, hey, the answer did not match the back of the book. That is not how it is going to work. There will be several choices in front of you and you have to pick one. Okay? So, this is always the case. So, get used to it engineering is decision making under uncertain conditions. Decision making under incomplete information and uncertain conditions. That means that you really do not know for sure whether this is the case or not. In some cases, the, the information may be completely missing. That is okay. That is the way it goes, but that is okay. So, now we are going to do to step number 3, find the forces at critical location. So, I do not know whether it is obvious to you or not, but this is a, this is a truss. Can you see that? You can see that it is pin jointed. All the joints are pin joints. That is what we have assumed and that the loads are applied only at the pin joints. So, you are guaranteed that it is a truss. Okay? Since it is a truss, I am going to use the method of sections. I am going to draw the free body diagram of this and I am going to, I am going to carry out. So, you can see where I am doing the force analysis here. By the way, there is one fundamental assumption that we do when we do this force analysis, which is that the structure is almost rigid. Deflections are very small. See, this is actually you already made a choice of material when you say this because